Welcome back. Now, in this video, we're going to be talking about a very important topic called a Taylor series expansion, or a Taylor series approximation. Now, this is something that you'll see over and over and over again in your physics career, so it's best that you understand it as early as possible. So, what is a Taylor series approximation? A Taylor series approximation is a way of approximating a really, really unusual or unwieldy function just around one region. So, let's just draw out an arbitrary function f of x. Let's just make it just really odd, nice, messy, etc. So, if we're interested, let's just say we're interested in just the behavior of this function around one region, let's say the region near x is equal to a we can use a Taylor series uh, expansion. And the way a Taylor series expansion works is it approximates an unusual function or a complicated function in terms of a polynomial, which is just something of the form a constant a0 plus a constant value a1 times x plus a constant a2 times x squared and as many additional orders as you need, let's say a to the n times x to the n. And the idea is the more orders you put on, the better your approximation or expansion should be. Now in this video, what we're going to do is I'm going to give the general formula for a Taylor series expansion for an arbitrary function, and then we're going to break it down and make sure you understand what each and every part means. Now, Conceptually speaking, the way a Taylor series expansion works is, let's say that we have our original function f of a, sorry, f of x. The way a Taylor series uh, approximates it is, it starts off by saying, well, if we are interested around the region x is equal to a, let's first start off with that function at x is equal to a. That's our zeroth order approximation, is just that value at the point. But then, our first order approximation is we want to have the same value, and we also want to have the same slope, or the first derivative, as our original function. Then the second order approximation would be, okay, we want to have the same value, the same slope, and the same second derivative. Third order would be the same value, same slope, same second derivative, same third derivative. Was the idea being, was each net additional order of a pro uh, approximation put on, the better and better and better your approximation should mimic the real function. So just to get the notation straight, uh, we're going to say that f of x is our original function, the one that's messy, unwieldy, and we're interested in approximating. And we're going to say that f tilde of x, at least I think of this tilde, that's going to be our Taylor series expansion, our Taylor series approximation. So let's start off by writing what this approximation is for uh, this uh, f of x. So we're going to say that f tilde of x is going to be equal to the original function evaluated at that point, f of a, plus, now we're going to have our x term, or we're going to put it as x minus a. You'll see why in a little bit. And then we're going to multiply it by our constant. In this case, our constant is going to look a bit intimidating. But fear not. We're going to have 1 factorial times the first derivative of f, our original function, with respect to x. And this term itself is evaluated at x is equal to a. Not this entire term just this bit right here. Now, we're going to do that for our next uh, term, so it's going to be x minus a squared over 2 factorial times the second derivative of f with respect to x, evaluated x is equal to a. Then we're going to do our third order term, so we're going to have x minus a cubed divided by 3 factorial times the 
third derivative of f with respect to x evaluated x is equal to a and we're going to add as many orders as need be let's just do n orders x minus a to the n divided by n factorial times the nth derivative of f with respect to x evaluated at x is equal to a now I know what you're thinking this looks intimidating but let's just break it down to make sure we understand what each and every part is if you notice every term with the exception of the first term has three different parts it's got an x minus a term it's got a factorial bit and it's got a derivative evaluated of something Now it's really important to keep in mind that this factorial term, that's just a number. That's a constant. And it's really important to recall that if you have a derivative of a function, or just a function, and you evaluate it at a point, let's say that this is just a function solely of x, then once when you evaluate it, it's no longer a function, it's just going to be a value, a scalar, or a constant. So this whole entire thing right here, this is just a constant. In fact, this whole entire messy thing is just our constant a1. And this x minus a term is going to be our x term. And same right here. This 2 factorial and second derivative evaluated as something. That's just our a2 term. Here was our n factorial and n derivative. That's our a n term. So to really show that this is an, appro is an approximation, and to show how well it approximates it, Let's just show what our, this approximation is at x is equal to a. So let's find out what f tilde at a is. Essentially saying, let's plug in the value a for the first part of every single term. So the first term, that's just still going to be itself. This is just a constant. There's no x dependency here at all. So it's going to stay the way it is. But notice we have something interesting with the second term. When we plug in x is equal to a, we get a minus a times this whole original constant, the uh, factorial and the derivative term. But a minus a, that's just 0. And when we multiply 0 times a constant, the whole thing is just going to be 0. So this huge messy term is just 0 when we plug in x is equal to a in this bit here. Same here with the second term. When we plug in x is equal to a for this bit here, we get a minus a squared, which is 0 squared, which is still 0. So the reason why we say x minus a instead of just this uh, original x term here is so that all the higher order terms go to 0. Now, the, what, what, what are we left with? We're left with our approximation at x is equal to a is equal to our original function at x is equal to a. That's our zeroth order approximation. So now let's see if they have the same slope. And we're going to do that by taking the derivative of this approximation term, and we're going to take the derivative of each and every term in the approximation. So let's say that f tilde prime of x, that's going to be equal to derivative of a constant, that's just 0. So put 0 there, plus this whole mess right here, that's a constant. We're just going to, that's going to carry, stay along for the ride. A derivative of x minus a, that's just 1, because the derivative of x is 1. So we're going to get 1 times, or 1 over 1 factorial, times the first derivative of f with respect to x, evaluated at x is equal to a plus now here we take the derivative of x minus a squared so we're going to get 2 times x minus a over 2 factorial times second derivative f with respect to x evaluated x is equal to a now let's do our third order term so this is going to be 3 times x minus a squared over 3 factorial times the third derivative of f with respect to x. Oops, this should be x squared here. 
at x is equal to a plus dot 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 as many terms as need be. Let's just do the nth order term for n factorial. This is n minus 1 times the nth derivative of f with respect to x at x is equal to a. So we still have a relatively polynomial-like term. We have constants, which are, we have our constants here, and our x term, our x squared term, we would have an x cubed term, and dot 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 dot, our x to the n minus 1 term. So still is in the form of a polynomial. That's what we mean by it's easy to take the derivative of a polynomial. But what happens if we evaluate this slope at our point of interest? Let's find out what f tilde prime at x is equal to a is. So we're still left with 0 here, this uh, original 0 here. The 1 over 1 factorial, that's just 1, so I'm not even going to write that. So this is just going to be first derivative of f with respect to x, evaluated at x is equal to a. That's the constant that's left, that's left over. Now notice what happens here. When we plug in x is equal to a here, the same thing happens as before. This becomes 0, so the whole thing becomes 0. So this third term, well, this term right here, becomes 0 at x is equal to a. Same with the next term, that becomes 0. So all the other higher order terms become 0 when we evaluate at x is equal to a. And the only term we're left with is just our first derivative term. So this is saying that our approximation, or the first derivative of our approximation at x is equal to a, is equal to just our first derivative of our original function evaluated at x is equal to a. Essentially saying that the approximation has this same first derivative as our original value of our original function. So just to really drive it home, we're going to try and find the second derivative of this approximation. So we're going to take the derivative of every one of these terms again. So this is going to be 0, just derivative of 0 plus. Now rem remember, this is just a constant. Derivative of a constant is still going to be 0 plus. Now, here we have just a bunch of constants times x minus a. And as we said before, the derivative of x minus a is just 1. So we're going to get 2 over 2 factorial times second derivative of f with respect to x evaluated x is equal to a plus let's take the derivative of this term the 2 is going to come down so we're going to get 3 times 2 times x minus a to the 1 over 3 factorial times the third derivative of f with respect to x evaluated at x is equal to a, and we can keep going to the nth order term, so plus dot 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 plus, say n times, uh, the n minus 1 comes down, so n minus 1 of x minus a to the n minus 2, all over n factorial times the nth derivative of our x, sorry, of our function with respect to x, evaluated x is equal to a. Now notice, once when we plug in uh, what this function is at, well, what the second derivative is at x is equal to a, let's see what happens. There we still get 0 plus 0 plus 2 factorial, that's just 2, so this just cancels right here and it's going to be 1. I'm not even going to write it, so we're just left with the second derivative of f term with respect to x evaluated at x is equal to a plus notice the same thing happens again if we plug in x is equal to a here this term is going to be zero and every other higher term is going to be zero but hopefully you should see in this the uh, in this example you should hopefully see the reason why we do factorial terms the factorial terms help for when we take successive derivatives of it. If we didn't divide by this 2 factorial here, we'd be saying that uh, we'd be left over with an extra 2, and we'd be saying that our second derivative of our approximation is twice as big as the second derivative 
of our original function. So let's just recap for a sec. Here we have the Taylor series uh, expansion for an arbitrary function f of x, and it consists of three, uh, each term has three components. The x term minus a and the x minus a helps higher order terms cancel when you plug in x is equal to a. It's got a factorial term to help make sure that we're not off by a factor when we take successive derivatives. And it's got a derivative term evaluated at a constant to make sure that at each and every, uh, well, essentially to make sure that our approximation or the derivatives are of our approximation match the derivatives of our original function. So hopefully that wasn't too confusing. You'll, like I said, you'll see this again and again. And I'm really pushing on time, so I will see you in the next video.